Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. What a special episode I have for you today because with me I have director, producer, and special effect artist. Well, I'm not going to tell you who it is just yet. He's from San Antonio, Texas, and I've got to tell you he started his career at the age of 15 and was hired to do special effects makeup for a PBS affiliate and later graduated into writing and directing his own feature films. Pretty incredible background, wouldn't you say, especially at such a young age. He ended up winning the National Special Effects Makeup Contest in Monsterland Magazine. And his first feature film, Ceremony, check this out, was shot on a 35 millimeter Panavision. Now, if you are a Generation X or Baby Boomer, you probably know what that is. And if not, well, you might learn a little bit about it on this episode. And I've got to tell you, that's a pretty phenomenal thing to do. The film was a pop, an apop oh gosh, I'm just so tongue-tied today, apocalyptic horror film a thriller and it won a silver award at the world fest charleston film festival this is a big deal along with a lot a lot of other big deals that he's done he later produced a second internationally distributed film feature film and that's something else that's pretty incredible because oftentimes we just have things that are domestic but to go international well that's a big deal and not only that but this is kind of fun for what we're doing today because it's the legend of the chupacabra and if you know anything about that that's kind of a little bit spooky and he filmed it on his parents ranch <laughs> and he also produced directed and created the special effects for the wildly successful cult film terror tunes you may be familiar with that because it spawned four sequels and that's pretty incredible and I'm going to ask him if there's going to be any more because, well, that is something in itself as well. Lionsgate, are you familiar with Lionsgate? Well, Lionsgate distributed, distributed my guest's seventh feature titled The Jack, oh gosh, this is so incredible, The Jackhammer Massacre. And if you're into horror films, the release of that was absolutely incredible, along with the release of The Summer Massacre. Now, I want to tell you a little bit something about The Summer Massacre, because this is something that might capture your attention if you don't already know about it. In fact, it drew multiple, multiple awards. And not only that, it placed my guest in the Guinness Book of World Records for the highest body count in a slasher film. This is a big deal. And you want to know what the number is? Mm, I bet you do. And I'm going to tell you it's 155 kills. Oh gosh. A lot of people want to know how many kills did you have? Well, in his, it was 155. So altogether, my guest has won over 46 awards in producing, directing, and creating special effects. He's also teamed up with somebody. I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you about that. I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. But they have produced and written and directed another 16 feature films. This is all very astonishing because guess what? His career is just beginning. Well, it began at 15, but right now there's so much more. And with me today, he's going to share something he has not even told me about, and he's going to share it with you. So with me today is Joe Castro. Welcome to the show. Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing? Happy October. Happy October. Guess what? Special effects and a special episode just for you because you've got something special to share with the audience. And I'm very excited because I have been waiting to talk to you about all of these things, but I have been waiting to find out what is going to happen for Halloween that you have got to share with us. 
Okay, okay. So wait, wait, wait! Um, don't tell me yet. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh! Don't tell me yet. Don't tell me. Let me ask you this. So, with all of these things that you've done, what do you think has been the most I don't know fun or significant that has stood out in your mind from the start That's of your excellent. career? Yeah. That's an excellent question. Um, basically probably the most eventful and life-changing event that happened to me. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to have to put two things on the pedestal. One is making a promise to my father mm -hmm. that I would forever chase my dream. At the age of 18, he literally looked me in the face and said, promise me, Joe, you will never stop chasing your dream. That gives me, that gives and I said, I promise. Chills. chills. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and the second thing, Second thing was, I got to work and become great friends with the man that produced, directed, wrote, and created all the special effects for the very first slasher movie ever made. And he made this movie in 1963. His name was Herschel Gordon Lewis, and he is considered the godfather of gore. Now, Herschel passed away three years ago, but before he passed away, he asked me to create the effects for the sequel to the very first slasher movie ever made. He made it 33 years after the original. And uh, wow. he later became, he became one of my, my, my good friends. Oh, I, I would go so far as to say as one of my best friends, because not only did he star in one of my movies and, and invite me to create the effects for uh, his film for the sequel to the very first slasher movie ever, he also gave me the blood formula that was used in the very first slasher movie ever. And I'm the only person that knows it. Yes. I, have the secret for, I have the secret formula. And, um, and the reason why it's so special is because blood was never photographed in color red in motion picture cinema in 1963. It was considered X-rated. It was considered pornographic, yes. The studios would not show color red blood. And he took a big chance and he made this movie it's called Blood Feast. And um, and he 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 just totally changed the shape of horror films with this film, and um, and so that secret blood blood formula he used in the first film he 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 told me he told me um, uh, back in 2007 he gave me the formula in an interview that my partner Stephen and I did with him, and uh, so I kind of hold it really special. I still use it. I still use it today on certain movie sets. It still has its place. And sometimes when I'm working on a movie, I will bring a container of his blood to set and say, this is Herschel Gordon Lewis blood. It was using the very first slasher movie ever, the formula, you know, and people will be in awe by it and very grateful and humble and appreciative that I still can share with the world what Herschel gave the world and gave the genre of horror and cinema. You bring to mind other sort of, spooky things of those that are creating in the basements, you know, Frankenstein <laughs> kind of stuff as you're talking about this. But this is really exciting because you have this innate ability to produce not only the movies, but produce these special effects in a way that really is able to capture what you want to portray and engage the audience's attention. That is really something uh, just unbelievable in itself to do. Thank and you. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. I mean, it, it really is. And not only that, but how many, how many people really in the realm of and scope of what you do in special effects are actually in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't, I don't know of anybody else. Right. I, I mean, like, yeah. like the, the only other, other other film I know in the Guinness Book of World Records for special effects, this is just to my knowledge, was a um, James Bond film. And it okay. was for the biggest, it was for, I think it was for the last James Bond film or the one right before that. It, it was the largest explosion ever on a movie set. And, uh, and so, so whenever Guinness, Guinness is mentioning like special effects or movies and Guinness Book of World Records, the Summer of Massacre always comes up. So it's in print. It's always in print. It's always still out there, you know. And uh, so it's always an honor to be mentioned amongst the likes of like James Bond, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what you do is an honor because 
you are multi talented. You've won multiple awards and this is pretty incredible. So at age 15, this is when you started doing things for PBS, the affiliate there, but I'm going to gather that you had things going on in your mind long before age 15. I did. That's a, that's, uh-huh. a, that's absolutely true. You know, um, I grew up uh, with interest in dinosaurs and dragons, like all young boys. And, um, you know, my father knew that uh, I would be very interested in Godzilla versus the Smog Monster, which was the film, the first feature film I saw, like by myself in my parents' living room on a Saturday afternoon. And it just changed my whole world when I saw that film. Um, I I knew that I wanted to make special effects and I knew that I wanted to, to pursue a career in directing and special effects and filmmaking, you know? So that was, uh, that was seven years old. I knew exactly then what I wanted to do. See, I think a lot of times often people have these pivotal moments in life where they realize there's certain things that are life altering. They're going to do something or not do something because of a certain thing that they see or experience. And that for you was at age seven and you knew from what you had seen. Now, Within this age group that you and I are, we can talk about certain things, but for those who are a little bit younger, they may not have any idea when I mentioned that you shot on the 35 millimeter Paravision. Yeah. What is that? What's a 35 millimeter Paravision? What is that? 35 millimeter Panavision is um, it's a type of camera. And this camera- That's right, I'm sorry. That's okay, it's a type of camera, but it's a movie camera. It's so, so it shoots moving images. It it, it takes pictures that then are later, you know, transferred uh, to a positive that can be projected on a wall that makes moving images. And of course, all that technology today is still, you can still use it, but it costs like a fortune to do it. I mean, you know, back in the day when I was when I made my first feature film on 35 millimeter Panavision, you know, you couldn't. Let's just put it this way: if you wanted to make a 90 minute movie, which is the basic running time of a feature film, right? 90 90 minutes, just 90 minutes worth of film. That doesn't include the outtakes. It doesn't include the mistakes. It doesn't include roll camera, speeding, and action. That's like three seconds right there. Okay, and cut, that's another two seconds. 90 minutes worth of film stock cost $75,000, just on its own, just, just 90 minutes. That that's unbelievable. Include, that doesn't include the developing of the film. It just includes the purchasing of it. It doesn't include the storage of the film. It has to be stored someplace in a cool air conditioning controlled environment. Right. Because the, aim, the, the, the silver nitrate that, that develops the film will erode it and make it decay. So it has to be stored somewhere, it has to be developed, and then it has to be transferred over to some sort of digital system so you can see it and edit it, and then the actual negative has to be cut. It's a huge process. So what's the size for the audience of this? Because somebody might be thinking of this handheld <coughs> that's a, you know such and such big, and they're just oh, gonna- Oh, right, a Panavision camera is, it, well, a Panavision camera, the camera itself is only about that big. But the, all the accessories that come on it, the, you know, the zoom lenses can be, you know, I, I actually, uh, did, for this film, I remember shooting in the desert and we we're shooting on this thing called a Panavision gold camera. Uh, and uh, we were shooting across the desert. You know, we were a quarter of a mile away from where the actual actor was. And they were using this zoom lens to get it oh, wow. really far away wide there. So, so the, the lens was like almost a foot and a half long. You know, the cameraman and has to be up on a giant ladder and has to hold it and zoom in. It's, it's, it's pretty intense. It's, a, it's definitely an adventure shooting on film. The thing yeah. that really captured my attention about that was that it was on 35 millimeter. Because mm-hmm. film, just film in itself from that era is, was incredible. And I know just, if you think about 35 millimeter film for a regular camera, when you talk about what you were talking about, the amount that you had to take for, and that's, that is a lot. 
And let me ask you this too. In your, your, the, the, the feed, call the, the feed cut out there when you set up. Can, can I, can, can I go get a bottle of water from the fridge? Absolutely. Okay? Can I run it? Yeah, I'm so tell me too a little about the special effects that I see in your background. Okay, you mean back here? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Uh, you know, I've, I've been with my partner Stephen Escobar for 21 years, and he has always uh, provided like a very creative envi environment for me to. Uh, to create in and so I get I got the whole garage this is this, this is the studio in the garage I got the whole garage to myself and I turned it into a uh, special effects laboratory there's all kinds of stuff back here you want to see some absolutely I do and I'm sure okay. that the audience would like to check it out as well uh, let's, I'll start off with this right here it's one of my there's a there's a this is a considered decapitated head oh my head. goodness can you see that really well? Yes, it is so yeah. real. Yeah, there you go. Now, this is uh, from the uh, this is of the actor Jason Brooks. He's in the new Friday the Thirteenth Vengeance film. And, oh my uh, he goodness! He flew down from he flew down from Washington to have his uh, head cast for the film. Uh, he gets his head torn off in the movie. How long does it take and, to um, cast a head? I can cast a head in under twenty minutes. Now, that's just the, the cast. It doesn't include sure. the rest of it, you know, the painting and the creation and the pouring up in silicone and whatnot. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, uh, m most of the time, an actor is um, is underneath the um, the alginate and underneath the process for about fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay. I was gonna attempt. To, I was gonna attempt to put this on. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I rarely do I actually get into this stuff. Let's see what the actor had to go through when he when he wore this. This is a, can you see this? I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh my goodness. Incredible. This is, a, this, is, this is a, this is a, supposed to be like a mutant zombie from uh, Thomas J. Churchill's uh, upcoming film, M. M, and, okay. Uh, yeah, M, yeah, there you go. And, uh, let's see. This now, you actually, have a, a lot of credits to your name, in addition to the things that I haven't mentioned. Um, how do you juggle all of this that you do? Because this seems to be very time-consuming with the amount of detail. You have such specific amount of detail in all of the things that you do. That one is incredible as well. <laughs> this is last year's Halloween costume, and I, I made my... See, there's, a, there's one demon face there. There's a... There's another demon face right there. And there's one on the back, I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How many people really freaked out over that? You know, people, I, I, I like to get dressed up on Halloween during the day, like at noon. You know, all the rest of the adults are at work during the day, but this is my job. So, right, right. Um, so I like to get dressed up like, you know, I'll, I'll have a little breakfast and then I'll. I'll get ready for the day and then I'll get dressed up at noon and then I'll go out during the work day. I'll schedule some appointments, go get the flu shot, go do some shopping, have lunch with a friend, dressed up in costume in broad daylight. So everybody can really appreciate all the details of my costume. And normally no one's really dressed up during the day. So it, it really helps everybody else get into the spirit of things. You know, some people normally don't celebrate Halloween, but they see me out in broad daylight. And it really makes it for a really festive day. So yeah. talking about that, you said spirit and that brought up in my psyche here, the spirit of Halloween. It's a store. Do major chains or even smaller retail type stores come to you and say, I would like you to make something and then we get the rights or you get the royalties or however it works. To create I've had several. Costumes. I've had several, several people approach me about making some things, mass production, but <clears throat> the stuff I make is so detailed and so yes. uh, custom, you know, like for instance, look at this thing here. Look at the, the, the detail on it is not, it's just not like your regular Halloween. No. And it has a, it has a, it has a movable jaw. 
Oh my gosh. A bit. This is incredible. For so, those of you who are listening you know, and don't have an opportunity to see this, you need to head on over to YouTube, either to the Rebecca L. Mahan YouTube channel, the Rebecca Sounds Revely YouTube channel, or Celebre Media VIP LLC, and you'll be able to see Joe's special effects on this. And you'll also want to check out his Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Joe dot Castro. Definitely That's want correct. to connect with him there because what he's got is, is unbelievable. There is nothing like this. And also how many of you have connected with anybody else that's been in the Guinness book of world records? Oh my gosh. He's pulling my <laughs> see, leg see, this, now. This, this, this leg, see how it, it moves like a real, this thing weighs about 10 pounds. So it's like the actual weight of a real leg, you know? So that way when it, it hits the ground on a movie set, it looks real, you know? It has to, it has to, uh, it's all custom, it's all custom made. I make custom, custom designs. It would be very difficult for me. To, you know, one of the most difficult things for a real artist, and I've talked to other artists and they will all agree with me. One of the most difficult things for a real artist to do is to duplicate something that they've done. Okay. It just, it, 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 it's it's almost like it's it's it's, it's cringe worthy because it's so um, we're we're ready to move on to the next thing or refine what's there. But to duplicate something we've already done would be a big chore. You know, it would be um, it would definitely be a mind a bit of a mind twister for us. You know, I can understand so. that. Now let's talk for a minute too. You've got Halloween on your shirt. This is a special edition. <laughs> because we have Halloween coming up and you have something special to share and drum roll. If you're ready to rock on with it. You may, would you like for me to share what, what's going on with me for Halloween this year? Yes. Well, I have two, I have several events that I'd like to go to. Uh, the two big ones that are on my plate are one is going to be uh, Hollywood has the Hollywood zombie walk and they have zombie walks all over the United States. And if you don't know what a zombie walk is, it's when a group of people in a city, you know, all, all collectively pick a date and a time. And they all get dressed up as zombies and they all converge on a spot at a given date and time and no one else in the public knows about it. So literally the streets of Hollywood will be flooded with zombies at a specific time and it's going to be the Sunday um, and it's going to be at five o'clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress up in head to toe as a zombie, like from a morgue. So it's going to be very risque. Uh, I will be almost completely nude, or I will be completely nude, but I, all the parts will be covered up with my organs. My, my guts will be hanging out of my stomach. So they'll be covering up the, my front side. I'm going to have my skin on my back filleted open so you can see my spine. So the skin from my back will be flapped over covering my backside. And uh, I have a good friend of mine and a talented makeup artist. Her name is Lisa Lex. She's going to come over uh, at one o'clock on Sunday, uh, four hours before the zombie walk and help me get into my, 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 my full body makeup. But it's going to be a big deal. And, um, you know, I'm going to make, I'm, I, go ahead. Joe, is that four, you said, or excuse me, five o'clock Pacific time? Five o'clock Pacific time at Hollywood and Highland. There you right go. Okay. Front the, right in front, of, right in front of the Kodak Theater, where the Oscars are held. All right. This yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So, and then, um, <clears throat> and then, of course, there's a couple of industry parties that I'll be attending next week uh, during the Halloween week. But the big day is, of course, Halloween Day. And what I like to do is I like to get dressed up uh, during the day and go out and visit with friends and visit with uh, professional, make professional appointments and show up completely dressed up in costume. And for this year, I normally don't divulge what I'm gonna be on Halloween beforehand, but I will just say, I will say this, I've never seen it done before. And I will, I will appear to be melting from head to toe. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, so, with me not being in California, and I kind of want to check this out now, is there, you, are you going to have this filmed? Will there be a live feed, a Facebook feed going? What's going will, to happen uh, so that we can get involved? Yeah, I will definitely have pictures, of course, on my, on my Facebook page 
Uh, I have to, I'll, I'll post them that everybody will be waiting. I'll be posting yes. them that night after, after the event. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm planning on doing a live feed of me getting into the makeup on Halloween day. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be pretty, pr pretty, be pretty fun. eventful. This is absolutely and it's all, a lot of fun. Also, it's all very experimental. What I normally do is I take Halloween to try out all my techniques that I haven't, I haven't done before on myself. So I can see how they work. I can see, you know, how, uh, how well they, 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 they fare throughout the day to see if makeup rubs off, to see if appliances fall off, to see how comfortable it is for the actor that I'm going to later throughout the year be putting them in and putting them through. I would never ever put something on an actor or an actress that I haven't already done to myself. See, that's an incredible thing because oftentimes you don't have someone that has done that. In fact, recently <laughs> I saw a costume. Now this is obviously nothing near like what you do, but the costume that was mass produced was sent to a child and it was put the the parents opened it up and it was so hideous that they put it on the child and took pictures of it placed it on facebook and said look what i got from xyz company and of course we couldn't help but chime in because we thought how in the world could somebody have done this so had whoever it was that produced this taking the time to do what you were doing, they would have seen what the results were and there would have been absolutely no way anybody, anybody would have done I think I know what you're it. talking about. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was yeah. hideous. I've got, I really have to say that because there, it, it was just parts taken, sewn up and thrown out. And the, mm -hmm. it's really unfortunate because People do, there's a lot, a lot of things that people do really appreciate about special effects and especially costumes and things when it comes to whatever it is, Halloween, special events, pictures, film, all of these things. And if it's not done right, there's disappointment all across the board and it really isn't a good thing. So what you're telling me really tells me a lot in how you have become a multi, multiple award recipient, as well as, again, gotten in the Guinness Book of World Records, have set yourself up to continue to move forward in this absolutely fantastic industry. And I know you have more on the horizon. I don't know if you're going to be able to share any of it with us today, but I know that- Oh, absolutely. Oh, do tell. Well, well right now, um... I just released my 18th feature film with my partner, Steven Escobar, and a very talented director friend of mine. His name is Thomas J. Churchill. And Thomas and Steven and myself wrote, directed, and co-produced all together. We all together, we did three people all together working in unison and in harmony, created a movie. Um, we all each wrote a portion of it. We all each directed a portion of it. We helped each other out on each different portion of it. And, uh, and so it has a beautiful, a very beautiful uh, style to it. And the title of the movie is called Xenophobia. Now Xenophobia. that title can be, yeah, it, can, it can mean many, it can mean several things. But for our film, it's a science fiction thriller horror film. So it means the fear of aliens or fear of the unknown from outer space. You know, anything foreign or foreigners. And mm -hmm. um, so uh, I had the opportunity to create um, all the aliens in the film. There's seven different species of aliens. And I didn't use CGI to do them. I built them all practically with my own hands. And that's really oh cool gosh. because it's a real homage to like, the Star Wars cantina scene. If you remember the Star Wars cantina scene, all the aliens Rick Baker built with the masks and puppets and whatnot. And so that's what I decided to do, kind of real throwback and homage to classic 80s science fiction films. And I have one of the, the aliens right here. I'm going to show you. Oh, we get to see oh, it. My favorite. There you go. Oh, my. Wow. This is incredible. Look at that. If I can hold up. Ooh, that is, kind of a blind eye here. that is really absolutely amazing work. 
Look at Thank the you. detail on this. Unbelievable. So. Thank you. Thank you. And there, now there are seven different alien species in the film. So, but that's one of them. And I have another one right up here. Okay. This one. All these eyes. See how bizarre it is. I, this one is definite. Can we see it more from the side? Because there's some detail here it's, that. It's oh. got like uh, like 12 or I can't tell how many eyes it has. See from the front. It's yes. got this big brain kind of cranium up here. Then it's got. Okay. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Wow. So, so how many. There's all different kinds. Of, go ahead. How many people. When you have someone, is it just one person in costume? How many people operate, say, one alien? Like, it looked to me like you had well, that, to hold that particular... Yeah, that, that, one took three that one took three people to operate. Okay. It, had a giant, it, has a, it has a giant body to it, and it's got two giant legs, and someone operates the head. And, uh, but it's, it's puppeteered. I like, I like, I prefer, putting a mask on someone is great in, in a costume, but I prefer when I'm making a species of an animal that's not human to make the whole thing from scratch, not to put a person in a costume because it just moves unhuman and it moves, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't copy that with CGI or with a person in a costume. You, can, you, can, you know, it's something unique and original that's never been done before. And you can't, you can't duplicate that. You can't duplicate that natural act of some giant alien leg walking or being puppeteered, you know. I appreciate, I really appreciate practical effects. It's a real craft that it uh, is. has taken a lot of people a long time to learn and to nurture and to care for. And I, I think that even though uh, computer generated effects are very, very good and they've come a very long way, there will always be a special place in motion picture cinema for you know, real acting, real people and real special effects. I will agree with you and I am excited to see how much more you are going to accomplish with all of the things that you're doing. I'm very excited about. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome. And I am really excited to see xenophobia. I am excited to find out what happens this Sunday, as well as uh, what you've got going on Halloween. I want to watch for all of the pictures. I wish there was a live feed going because I think that would be a lot of fun but I'll watch for the pictures. I really want the audience to connect with you. Do you do any other social media aside from Facebook? I do Instagram. My Instagram account is Joe underscore Castro underscore director. I love it. I love it. I'm really and, excited yeah. about everything yeah. you're doing. The, but I, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Thank you. Say that thank again? You, thank you. Um, oh, I was going to say that um, Xenophobia is out right now at every Walmart in America and on all the uh, home media uh, streaming platforms. And um, uh, then you can get, you know, if you Google my name, you can get most of my films on Vimeo or Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, you can see The Summer Massacre, the Guinness Book of World Records slasher film right now. It came out for Halloween. It's on Amazon Prime. Yes. And it's available on Blu-ray and DVD right now. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being with us today, Joe. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to uh, share uh, my, uh, my adventures with your viewers. And uh, happy Halloween. Thank you. Woo! And for all of those of you who, who are watching, make sure to connect with Joe because I've got to tell you, the special effects that he does is detailed, unique, his craft is absolutely incredible, and you've got to just be on the edge of your seat to see what he's going to do next. And one of the things that you can do is watch Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific time out in Hollywood, what he's got going on. And the, if you can't be there, if you cannot be there in person, watch the Facebook page and the Instagram account because you're going to see some of the amazing things that he's going to do that as well as Halloween. I wish all of you a very safe and happy Halloween and whatever you've got going, maybe you can uh, send Joe's way 
and get some feedback on what creativity that you have done yourself. I ask you again to connect with Joe. Also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Check it out on social media. But we ask you to share this with all your friends, your family, those you know, and those you don't. <laughs>